I was told that many courses usually consist of six lectures. I would prefer to have eight, yes, but. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 just uh, how to say, let us see. And uh, uh, this talk will be once again mostly blackboard talk uh, because uh, it kind of highly non-trivial. It's just not a list of information which you need, I don't know, to remember. But uh, there are a lot of things kind of to understand and uh, which would be not usual and so on. And uh, uh, so, and uh, also each course should of course contains uh, something hard so everybody understand that it is not a trivial subject, yes? So this lecture will uh, serve this uh, goal. So I will speak about the algorithm HHL, where I forgot HHL is uh, the first, uh, so this is three last names. So there is no, no meaning, yes, so of the people who invented it, of uh, how one can solve a linear equation on a quantum computer faster than, much faster than the classical computer do. And uh, uh, I will not tell algorithm in full, yes, because there are a lot of uh, details there. I will tell what is the important things which I missed, yes, and but if I would like all to cover all of them, it's actually eight lectures will be not enough, yes, because they did, um, it's based on some data structures and, and so on. But it shows the uh, new type of algorithms which can be. And another thing is that, of course, the paradigm, if, uh, you want, if you're able to speed up linear algebra, then you are able to speed up everything. Yes, so that's a paradigm. Uh, so, uh, how to say, all machine learning, all, all partial differential equations. So this is kind of way too basic stuff. Yes, so this is the same level of generality of uh, Fourier transform, yes, which appears everywhere. So let me start. Uh, so first of all, let me set up the problem by itself. Yes, so I have a matrix of a big size, yes, two to the power n to, by two to the power n, yes? And I will denote two to the power little n as a capital N. Yes, so that's just a notation, normal. And uh, I have a given vector of uh, uh, size two to the power n. Yes, and I want to find x such that it solves this equation. Yes, and uh, this is what how we pose the problem in a classical sense. Yes. Now let me show what does it mean in a uh, quantum computer sense. First of all, uh, you somehow need to upload matrix A in the computer, yes, and I will not tell what does it mean. So during the algorithm, there will be some operations which I need to do, and uh, the fact that A is uploaded would means that I am able to do those operations. I will comment how it can be done. Does that mean that you can access some parts of the database? So it, it, it means a, a bit different because you see, I want to show an algorithm which would work, uh, of all, uh, the speed of it will be of order n. Yes, not of order, uh, small n, not of order capital N. As soon as I assume that I can access, uh, you know, to individual elements, yes, then okay, even to access them, yes, I need uh, to have at least two to the power n operations. So this is much more complicated data structure. Yes, so of course, I need somehow to upload matrix. This would take definitely time two to the power n, yes. And, uh, uh, but uh, at least two to the power n. 
but uh, I want to assume that it is uploaded in a such way that I can relatively fast do some operations related to A. And uh, this could be implemented once again because of the magic of uh, entitlement. Yes, but uh, I don't touch the, the whole data structure. So I will assume that I can do some operations with it. Yes, which exactly I will show uh, later. Yeah. Uh, so the second thing, uh, in which sense I have a vector B given. And this would be much, this is clear, and then this I can say kind of exactly right now, yes? This means that I would have some n qubits, little n qubits, which are in the state of the, uh, how to say, or in the, in front of k state, yes, uh, we have a multiplier bk, yes? And we should normalize, of course, to norm of vector b because uh, it should be a legal quantum state, so it sh its norm should be equal to one. Yeah, so I assume that this uh, guy is given to me. Yes, so I assume that somewhere in quantum computer there are n bits which are in this state. And I want the same, what, what I want, I want to put them in another state, so x, which is defined by a similar formula, so I can see the coordinates xk of it and normalize by norm. Yes, and uh, such, but if I consider them as a vector, so they satisfy equation ax equal to b. So in order to completely solve a uh, linear equation, I also need uh, uh, to have uh, uh, to find the constant to which I should normalize x. But, uh, I mean, this is, I, I live out of the quantum computer. I'm going to do this in a classical computer, yes? So in the, uh, in quantum I will find what are the uh, relative values of coordinates of uh, vector xk, yes? It's either done on a classical computer, kind of, uh, this is setting up of the problem. So the, I set up, now I will produce and I'll provide an algorithm, which by given vector like this, gives you vector like that. Yes? So not, uh, uh, this is the goal of HHL algorithm. It's not completely solving of AX equal to B. Yes, but this is what you can do with quantum computer, yes? So it's up to you how to use it, yes? Sometimes if you simulate, say, a uh, hyperbolic equation, yes, you can just do this, yes? Because it's auto A is automatically there unitary, yes? Or you can do in another way. So sometimes, or if you want to do sampling, yes? So with choose... Uh, uh, k with a probability xk squared, yes? Then you can just measure and get a sample, yes? So that kind of, it's up to you, yes? So it's a question in which a real problem uh, you have this equation, yes? Now, you see here, uh, so this algorithm has a very uh, strange property. To upload data takes much longer than solving a question. So you see, in order just to upload vector B inside quantum computer, of course you need at least N operations. Uh, at, le at least capital N operations. Because you need to upload each uh, value there. Yes, and, uh, and uh, the algorithm in the end would be logarithmically of capital N. Yes, logarithmic complexity of capital N. So because of this, I don't touch question from where vector B comes. I don't touch uh, the question of no, how to find the norm of X. Yes, I tell that 
given that vector, I want to have this vector. This is setup of the problem. This what in quantum computing people call to solve linear equation. Yes, so this is kind of definition of the problem. Yes, we, we are moving out. Of, uh, we what? So I agree that this is a reasonably posed problem. Yes. And so it's not a complete uh, solve of differential equation uh, of uh, linear equation, and I explicitly tell what is missed. Yes. So, so the the missed part is the norm of vector x, you, which you should get somehow differently. Yes. In some different way, not not inside this algorithm. Yes, so this is only real. So you get a vector which is parallel to the vector, not, not parallel, but is um, difference by multiplication to the vector of a true solution. This is also a lot of information about the vector, yes? Okay, my, but this is all a lot of information. Uh, so, this is the statement of a problem. More questions about the statement of a problem. Okay. So now I would like to do the first kind of trivial step, which is not inside quantum computers, but which is on a blackboard. The all, in all f further considerations, I would ex consider A is a self-adjoint operator. So, but remember even that we are in a quantum world and we want to relate X and B. So it's not unitary operator. It is self-adjoint operator, yes? So this equation doesn't exist in a world of quantum computing because it, like in quantum computer, all the operations has to be unitary. So it's not really unitary operation to get from B X. So either we need additional qubits or, or whatever, yes? But so something else. And uh, uh, question why, uh, when I assume that A is a self-adjoint, why I don't miss anything? And the answer is very easy. Let me consider another matrix, which has this, this form. Yes, so I have A star, uh, so a joint of A, A, I put it on the diagonal, so okay, it's uh, two to the power n plus one. Two to the power n plus one, yes, but it's one extra qubit, and one qubit is not a, a big, uh, how to say, price. Yes, and then I just put a, instead of vector b, which was original, the the vector which in the first coordinates has zeros, and in the second have b, and in that case its solution will be x zero. Yes, so that's uh, clear. So. If from this point of view, it's enough to consider uh, only self-adjoint operators. Because, okay, with the price of one qubit, we can reduce one problem into another. Uh, so, uh, one more thing, yes? So, even that one actually have modification of this algorithm which works for arbitrary matrix, I would speak only about algorithm which speak, uh, which works with sparse matrix. So I will assume that at each line and at each column of my matrix, there are not more than S uh, non-zeros. Yes, but still, I, uh, so in my matrix, there are approximately two to the power n times s non-zero elements. This is non-zeros in row, yes? And in column, yes? But still, it's possible it has two to the power n times s elements. Yes, so this is uh, <laughs> not so, it's also a big amount of, uh, Elements, yes. So still, to upload it, you take uh, exponential time. So this I will also assume. Technically, Charles don't like word technically. So my algorithm. 
Yeah, it's uh, how to say a rubbish word. Yes, I should admit it. <laughs> and uh, uh, anything uh, my algorithm works for non-sparse matrices, it would not be just faster. <laughs> yes, it would be faster only than classical algorithm on non-sparse matrices. Yes, on non-sparse matrices, it will not be faster. Yes, so this is why I don't do this. Yes, so, uh, okay, this is setting up of a problem. Let me start with, uh, let me start with uh, algorithm. So, ingredient one, it will be phase estimation algorithm. So, but remember this ingredient, it could work not only in this HHL algorithm, but anywhere, yes, but. So now assume that we have U given, uh, given uh, unitary operator. And given means the following. Yes, so we need to define what means given. It means that we can run a control u to, to, to the power two to the power k. Yes, we can run, able to run, to, to execute on our computer. Yes, so this is exactly what I want from this, uh, what means given. So I can run such operators. And assume okay, that it has eigenvector with some eigenvalue. Yes, and of course the eigenvalue is of uh, modulus one, so it has a form e to the power two p i phi u. Yes, and so uh, goal, yeah, so this can, so assume that what I have state u somewhere in my computer. Yes, yeah, so I have could be in this state. My goal is to, so I will write it here. So I have u given, yes, and I want, also, to, I want to have t extra qubits, and I want to encode in those qubits, so the digits of phi, yes, phi one, phi two, phi three, phi t, and so on. And so I want them to read it and put it here. So originally they are zero state, yes, and I want in the end them to be, let me recall, yes, uh, so phi one, phi two, phi t state. This is my goal, that is what I want. And now, now this would be kind of later, so the algorithm which does this is called phase estimation. So I will later use it as a black box, but I will open this black box. I show how to do this. Yes. Let me once again draw this scheme. Yes. These strings. Yes. So I have zero in the input. Yes. Okay. I should write it like this. And. Uh, let me just consider a scheme, yes, and uh, the scheme will be the following, yes, so I just first apply Adamar gate to all these elements, to all these t qubits. They are usually called clock. And uh, uh, 
clock, the, like, uh, like the thing which shows the time, yes? Yeah. And uh, uh, after this, I would consider so just a simple scheme, yes? This would be u to the power, two to the power, z controlled u to the power zero from this qubit. From second qubit, it will be u to the power two, controlled u to the power one, and the, the last one will be controlled u two to the power t minus one, yes? Let us see what one control do with this operation. Uh, there is, in the end, there is also control, so, yes? It's not the end of the algorithm, but let me at this time make a pause and uh, explain what, is, what it is actually doing. And let me explain on example of one qubit. Yes, on one of those guys. So assume that I have uh, the scheme like H, so here was zero, here was U, yes, and I made controlled u to the two to the power k. Yes, and I want to see what would be the result of this scheme. Yes? So first, after Adam Argate, it is on the state, uh, let me erase something. Yes, let me erase this thing. Yes, it's on the state, one over square root of two, uh, zero plus one, u, yes? And let me better write it in the form that it is of, uh, that one over square root of two, zero u plus one u. Yes, because now I would like to apply this uh, gate independently, how to say, first to the first term, and after this to the second term. And to the first, by the first term, so this way I use control to u two to the power k. Uh, so what it would be the result? Yes, the, the first term doesn't change. Yes, and what is happening with the second term? Okay, uh, it goes to one lambda two to the power k u. Yes, because uh, U was an eigenvector. Yes. So then, now I would just consider this, continue this equality. Yes, and I would say that this is zero plus e to the power two pi i phi two to the power k. Yes, uh, pi two to the power k u, yes? And uh, okay, let us think a bit what this guy is doing, yes? So this guy is somehow related, phi to the times two to the power k is somehow related, of course, to uh, the digits of uh, what we see, yeah? So this term phi, times two to the power k is very strongly related to digits of, of uh, phi, what to those digits, phi one, phi two, phi t. Digits, yeah. so this is uh, each of phi one, phi two is either zero or one. Yes, question? So I can, s so phi is a number between zero and one. Yes, I, I can write it in the binary form as, you know, the, okay, the, yes, uh, phi, phi k is a digit, is a digit, yes? And this is just a binary representation. of. So up to now, to b and to x, it is not related anyhow. So I create a, a black box, which I call phase estimation, which has a goal by a given vector u and a given operator capital U, yes? It allows me to put in a 
clock qubits digits of this guy. Yeah, I mean, like up to now, it's not related to B, A. Yes, you even A was self-adjoint, U is a, a unitary operator. So what's the relation between them, yes? It's not opened yet, so this is a, like, I, I need a new tool, <laughs> yes, <laughs> to complete this. And okay, so what then is happening here, yes? So, and, uh, uh, so, okay. One and everything is uh, U, yes? So once again, it moves a direct product to a direct product. And okay, because I did this with every uh, qubit, then in the end I have, uh, uh, so I would have a direct product of those guys, direct product to you. But we have seen such a, such a guy before, yes? And this guy was a result of quantum Fourier transform. So if, like, imagine, for a while that it's ended here. It's possible, like, consider this special case, yes? Uh, then uh, we know that if it is encoded here, then state phi, yes, which we, now it's illegal to write it like this, which means that the first could be in a state phi one, the second is in state phi two, the third in state phi three, and so on. By quantum Fourier transform, will go exactly to such a product. Yes, so it will go exactly to one to power two t half, and uh, the product, okay, product I will write like this, yes, of uh, zero plus uh, e to the power t p i phi two the power k, one. Yes, we know that quantum Fourier transform was doing like this. It is from previous lectures. Yes, and then what I would like to do, so I already created this state. Yes, and so I would like to put here inverse of quantum Fourier transform. Yes, if we can do some operation, in quantum computers, we can do the its inverse as well. Yes, so I put here inverse of quantum Fourier transform. And in that case, if phi was exactly, think like this, yes, then uh, I will get exactly so that this qubit will be in state phi one, this will be in state phi two, this will be in state phi t. Okay. Of course, the life is unfortunate, yes, and usually you have a longer <laughs> thing. Uh, then it tells uh, the following, it could be estimated and proved, but I would not show this because, I mean, I have a limit uh, lecture size, yes, and uh, for con concrete estimates of probabilities, I refer you to this paper, which I called uh, something, a primer, <laughs> linear, uh, Linear systems, a primer where it is in a very good way uh, explained. Yes, yeah, so with a high probability, with a high concentration, I will be in this state. And there it exactly tells how many additional, actually, I, I need to try to estimate more than t qubits, uh, t, t digits, yes, in order to have first t correct. Yes, yeah, so that's, yeah, Charles. I can send, yes, it's, it's on the archive, yes, but okay, I can send. Uh, it's archive and it's in the announcement of the lectures that there is a, yeah. yes, yes, it's, uh, yeah, but I can send, yes. Uh, so that's uh, what it does, yes. So in the what is going on in lectures, I would always assume that phi is exactly put it here. Even that I know that it is not the case, yes, uh, and uh, but ever actually algorithm is constructed in a such a way that, okay, in the end I will get not exactly vector x, but something which is close to vector x. And uh, how much it is close would depends on 
uh, on number of these qubits which I've chosen here. Yes, some extra qubits which I used. Yes, and uh, okay, this is the price, but uh, you shouldn't, yeah? So even in the model, I have this difficulty. So uh, I, will, I will get here not exact phi, not only because the real computer has errors, but just because I, I want to encode number phi, its digits, into qubits. And if I have limited number of qubits, then I can do this only with certain precision. Yeah, let's discuss this uh, later. Yes, I would be happy, yes, because this is one of the things which one could improve, but actually I speak about one of the algorithms of matrix inversion. There are much more. It's, there are a lot of its variations. Yes, so this is actually not optimal algorithm, but I mean, this, <laughs> this one is hard enough, yes, so let's <laughs> not put into the in, intra, so let us later have, of course, advanced quantum computing where we would consider advanced algorithms, yes? So I, later in the talk, I will assume that those digits perfectly uh, got phi, yes? This would be my assumption, and you should believe that if it is not the case, then just in the end, you will get not exactly x, but something clo close to x, yes, in this good norm, yes, in a proper norm, yes? So that's it. I finished with phase estimation. Yes, it's, it's not a complicated scheme. Uh, the only thing which I would like to warn you, so I assumed uh, that here I asked these guys to be uh, able to execute. Yes, because if I ask you, uh, if I ask myself to be able to execute uh, just controlled U, then in order to execute this one, I need exponentially in T many operations, yes, so which could potentially increase the complexity, yes? And sometimes one have to do this, Somehow, sometimes one just stupidly have to repeat, but sometimes people have a smart algorithms to do this immediately, yes, so, and this is why I want to open this. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it's possible to implement smart algorithm to have uh, controlled uh, you to, to some power. Yes, I assume that this is just a phase rotation. Yeah, I mean, why not? Yes, why it is not just a rotation on a certain phase? Yes, then, okay, then it's very easy to implement. You just multiply uh, the, the argument of rotation by two to the power t, yes, and uh, you are done. Yes, so also you can implement this in one gate. Yes, so, okay. Uh, so, mm -hmm. that's that's it with this algorithm. Let me now go and see how. Okay, how first of all, how I get this operator u from this matrix A. Yes, which is now self-adjoint. And another, what is the idea of a solution? So, uh, okay, let we have A, yes, and it has eigen, eigen vectors. UK with a corresponding eigenvalues lambda K. Yeah, let B will be a sum of beta G, UG. Yes, then 
what is exact for, okay, UG always make a basis because it's a self-adjoint operator, so it's sort of normal basis. So uh, nothing has changed. So, but then how I can find X? X will be proportional, yes, uh, beta G divided by lambda G UG. Yes, and this is exactly the idea, kind of this formula, which would uh, uh, behind of uh, everything. Yes, because what I will do, I will actually implement a scheme. I will write now a horrible thing, yes, but please forgive me, which will move uj into one over lambda j uj. Yes, because of, of course the, the right hand side not doesn't exist, yes, because the, so if it is unitary, then this is not a unit vector, yes. But I will do this kind of for all basic vectors, yeah, basis vectors, and so in the end, if I able to do this, and in which sense I have to explain, I will get this one for free, yes. So because uh, if uh, B was an eigenvector, I need to uh, have something which is, I would say, proportional to one over lambda j, this eigenvector. But okay, I need to do this for all eigenvectors at the same time. Yeah, so I use the fact that everything inside quantum computer is linear, so if I do something with the basis, it would work with everything. Yes, and okay, now let me write an answer. Yes, now let me write the scheme which solves this. Mm -hmm. And after this, we will discuss uh, how it is, how it is doing it. Uh, how to implement it. Yes, first of all, why it is give, gives us proper result. And the, uh, another thing, there will be several things which I missed there, and I give them <laughs> missed. Yes, uh, uh, but uh, uh, we will discuss uh, how, say, how one can potentially implement them. Uh, so the scheme. So first of all, I will write what is u, and u will be equal to e to the power minus i a times some p. Yes, and what would be the value p, I will tell later. Yes, but this is a real number. Yes, so to the choice of p I will explain later. Yes, and uh, okay, if a is self-adjoint, this is unitary operator, and uh, uh, so this would be the u from phase estimation. So the scheme is the following. So I start with vector u here. I add t qubits, which I called clock qubits, which would de determine the precision, actually, of what I'm doing. So this higher t I take, better I will determine the values phi. Yes, so better I, I will get a result. Yes, so the first thing will be just I use phase estimation here. Yes, and actually P will be chosen in a such a way uh, that, uh, okay, so here there are some eigenvalues, yes, uh, lambda one till lambda capital N. Yes, and eigenvalues for U will be I times lambda 1 uh, minus uh, P minus lambda 2 P minus I lambda N P. And I want them to be, how to say, good fitted into this uh, notation. Yes, just that the biggest one puts exactly one here, yes, and this is, the, say, it doesn't cross one when it goes here, yes, but, but it still reaches one here. 
Yes, so I mean that they cannot immediately improve. Yes, ideally, yes, P will be equal to one over, uh, I forgot lambda min or lambda max, lambda max. Yes, so ideally like this, but okay, we don't know lambda max exactly. So, so, so this a priori information which we should get somehow from classical computer, yes, uh, this is in uh, this value of this P is an a priori information. So we need to know in advance something about its eigenvalues. Yes, uh, so I do quantum phase estimation. After this, so I have one more ancilla qubit. Yes, and I will do rotation in front of this coordinate. Yes, so let me write it up to now, rotation. So, but this is, this would be a fixed gate, yes, which I just kind of, uh, this would be a fixed operation, yes, which I just need to, it would be the, the same for all algorithms. Yes, because U, capital U, you implement uh, in a different, always differently. Yes, but this would be just one operation. Yes, so, and, uh, yeah. And uh, I will later, after the, so after draw the scheme, I will write what this operation is. And after this, I do uncompute. Yes, so I do phase estimation back, uh, back uh, inverse. Later there will be one trick, but exactly here I would like to have X. So my answer, oh, okay, here was B, not U, sorry. Yes, so the, it's exactly the, so and after this scheme here, it will be somehow encoded state X. How exactly, I show later. What does rotation? So rotation has two, cube, two, two parts here. Yes, one is, uh, I will call it lambda. Yes, so something which in, is encoding uh, this phi. Yes, here, but I will call it lambda. So it's, uh, the, uh, another one will start in a, from zero as well. So those guys start in zero state. And to where it will go after rotation? Let me copy from the notes so not to make a mistake. Yes, so they will go to a special thing. Uh, so one minus C squared lambda squared, lambda zero plus C over lambda, lambda one. Yes, a C is some constant, but it's up to us to choose it. Yes, so I can write it rotation of C. Yes, but here it was uh, some, uh, something corresponding like it is written as a phi, yes, each phi corresponds to a certain lambda here, yes, and I want to have this rotation. Yes, but this is a fixed operator, yes, because it, it should take any value which is encoded here, yes, so, and put it into this state. This is a fixed rotation and please believe me that it is possible to implement. Yes, in the worst case, this is a similar to the case that you need just to upload data. Yes, and uh, in that case, in, in the worst case, it takes two to the power t time. Yes, so the, the worst case, the worst implementation, so the most stupid implementation is uh, two to the power t. Yes, but of course, better things is better thing is possible. Yes, but I don't want to uh, explain this 
end of the scheme in the details. Yes. Yes. So, uh, okay, I write here C because for some C it would be easier to implement it. Yes, on a computer. The, but uh, there is a fundamental restriction on the value of C. C should be bigger, uh, should be smaller, should be smaller than lambda mean. Yes, than the smallest eigenvalue. Yes, because in another case, this guy is bigger than one. Yes, and this is not a legal state. Yes, so you have to choose. Uh, ideally, you should do this with lambda mean. Yes, and uh, this would give you the, the best result. Yes, but there is a fundamental restriction, and uh, how to say, you should choose the C which is most convenient for your computer. But uh, once again, this is just one fixed operator, so it's possible to implement it, yes. <laughs> Actually, with any C, it's possible to implement it, yes. And uh, so this is what is, but I need it. Let us see what is happening. What is happening in, a, what is the result of application of this scheme? Uh, let us have a break and uh, do this after the break because it's, it's time for, for it. Five minutes break. Five minutes.
one, two, three. So let us see what this scheme is doing. Yeah, so we start. So let me call this as a clock. Uh, this I will call S, S until a qubit. And okay, this is initial data I will call init. Yes, because I need to, to write this somehow, yes, so in order to distinguish. So I will, even that here it is written as clock in it, yes, I will write it as a clock. B, so in it, S. Yes, so please forgive me. Yes, so what I do, so let us see what first phase estimation is doing. Yes. So I call those qubits clock qubits, the definition. It's the same meaning. Yes? I mean, you put uh, my brains <laughs> corrupted with, with this question. I mean, so I look on this scheme, yes, and I call them clock, and they have the same meaning as there, yes? I don't give mathematical definitions. I don't do mathematical theorems, yes? So please forgive me, and the phrase, the same meaning doesn't have mathematical definition of the same meaning, yes? And uh, even more, I occasionally allow myself, okay, to say even not completely proper notation, but then I how to say, ask you to, if you understand, if you don't understand, then I reply to your questions. Yes. Uh, because if I write everything completely correct, I should write everything in tensor products, and you will see the blackboard full of mess, which in my opinion, no one can understand, yes? So this is the, uh, the problem, yes? And, uh, and this is software development, which is kind of proved not by theorem, but by the fact that it works, yes? So this is, mm. okay, yes, so let me do first phase estimation. Yes, I do the first phase estimation, so this guy, and okay, it should, Gives me, it should put me in a situation that in the clock is somehow encoded lambda and forgive me the way, so I should write here phi, yes? But I write here instead of proper phi corresponding lambda, yes? So, uh, okay, now before I write phrase estimation, let me write uh, that it is equal what it is equal, yes, because I want to open B as a sum. Yes, so this is a clock. Yes, this is sum of beta G, UG, uh, zero. Yes, yes, yes. Just like this. And by phase estimation, it goes to sum of beta G, lambda, G, U, G, uh, that's it, <laughs> zero. Yes, so there are those two, now I joined in the sum, yes? And uh, so this is the state, yes? So as I told, actually I should here write phi, correspond, phi which corresponds to this lambda, but such phi exists, but then I have to write two indexes, yes, because uh, here it is encoded phi with digits, so I would write two digits, story, and uh, I should remember p and divide by two pi, so, but let us just remember that there is a clear re linear relation between lambda and phi. So what rotation is doing? Yes. 
And for this, I will put zero for a moment inside. Yes, the summation. And okay, rotation is acting only here. Yes, and it is never changing. Uh, st uh, how say this? Basis state here, but uh, so it's living in the form that sum of B J, but beta J, lambda J, U J, and here instead of zero appears uh, appears this expression. And let me write it in the form C over lambda, lambda one plus something, uh, okay, just one, yes, one plus something zero, because it would not be important for me what is the coefficient here, yes? And uh, okay, this is, I would just make more uh, brackets in order to be, I would say, sure where the brackets are finished. And now, let me see what is happening if I do uncompute. Yes, and uncompute acts very simple. This group moves those guys just to zero uh, UG. And this guy doesn't change us because uh, he it was a direct product. So for the case when uh, in, as a vector in register in it, it is an eigenvector, this doesn't change us. Yes, so this would go to this phase estimation inverse. It will go to sum of beta g, zero, u g. It's okay, the, the inverse was actually not much important, yes? C over lambda, one, plus something zero. Yes. And uh, let me now rewrite this sum into the form which is needed for me uh, for future, in future. So I will, I will open those brackets. And uh, so this was clock, because now I need to distinguish clock and S, yes, so let me <laughs> distinguish that. Yes, so this will go, this is equal, not go, it's just equal to sum of beta C times beta G over lambda J of zero U J one plus something, I don't care what it, plus, let me write, plus sum, something, which ends with a zero S. Yes, and I don't care what is there, yes? So this is what our scheme is doing. Yes, and we see here, somehow encoded the correct answer. So, but we need to extract it somehow, yes, because there are some sums, some terms there. And the um, way how it is solved is a very strange way. We do measurement here. Yes. If the result of the measurement is one, then this vector becomes in the correct state. If the result of the measurement is zero, we think we failed. So we need to run it again. <laughs> yes, so this is a bit, it's a new type, yes, of algorithm. Yes, and uh, in that case, this is important, why it was important to have big C. Because bigger C, bigger will be probability to have here one, yes. And okay, what is the probability? Okay, of course, depends on the, the way on eigenvalues which are there on initial state. Yes, but you can have a, a, a lower estimate of it. And uh, uh, 
a lower estimate is related to the following. So there is lambda max and lambda mean, yes, which is called condition number. And this is a very frequent uh, element if you want to invert, if you want to solve the equation AX equal to B. Yes, uh, this is not a precise method, but uh, fast, not precise method. It always appears uh, in the way how good it works, this number which is called condition number. And uh, in our case, it has several roles. First of all, uh, it will be, I would say, upper estimate of number of calls before we get one, yes? So the probability uh, that uh, after measurement we get one is, will, will be at least one over kappa. Yes, so this is not k, this is kappa. Yes, I just uh, bad in Greek writing, yes. Yes, so it will be at least one over kappa. Yeah, so we, we need to run it approximately kappa time before we get a good result. Uh, the other thing, uh, the role which kappa plays, that if you start, uh, so I assume everywhere that, you know, all the values in the phase estimation are exactly determined. Yes, but now if one goes deeper and try to uh, understand uh, the, the true, <laughs> so up to which order I can do this, it happens that I need to take at least t, uh, at least uh, logarithm of kappa plus one. Yes, yes. So this kappa will work like less class, like we do kappa times the same process and then measure it, and then the probability will close, will get closer. No. No, 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 we, no, we do, we, we do once, yes, we measure, and with probability one over kappa, we get good result. So we need, how to say, if we want to be, how to say, <laughs> the mathematical expectation of number of times which we need to run algorithm before we get the result is kappa. Yes, so this is. So, so setup is fixed. Setup is the following. Phase estimation, rotation, uncompute, measurement. Yes? And you cannot repeat if you got zero. Yes? Okay. Because uh, uh, you, you are in a trouble because you damaged actually the state at B. Yes? So it's a problem because you need to reinitialize it. Yes, which might cost you time. Yes, and uh, because quantum computing, uh, quantum computers are quantum, yes, so there is no cloning. Yes, so you cannot store somewhere B, and after this all the time, you know, copy it. Yes, so it's a hard procedure. Yes, so this is a bad part of the algorithm. So uh, I exactly want to tell that there is some power inside quantum computers. Yes, there is a bless. Yes, and but there would be a curse. Yes, for this. Yes, because and uh, the bless is that okay. This algorithm you will see it actually if length of its implementation is not proportional to capital N, it would be proportional to small n. Yes, which is exponential speed up. But uh, there is a, another price, and one of the prices is that, okay, uh, you get not a solution, but solution up to something, but this is, you know, minor price. Uh, another thing that you don't get exact solution, yes? And the third thing, it's not like a, a classical function that you run it and you get a result, yes? You run it, and with reasonable probability, you get a result, and with reasonable probability, you spoil everything. <laughs> yeah, so you need to re remember about this if you construct 
uh, bigger algorithms. And you see it's a bit of problem now to speak about, okay, but what people really doing? Yes? <laughs> because there is no quantum computer yet, so people are not really doing this. So this is, we are mathematicians, yes, we, we thinking about future, not about past. So I, I'm in a quantum state, yes? 50% mathematician, 50% not mathematician. Yeah, 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 I'm a Schrodinger, uh, Schrodinger uh, mathematician, yes? I uh, hope that if this means um, mathematician or not mathematician, not uh, is the same as with cat, yes? Alive or not alive. Yes, so because you see what was happening here, yes? what was the length of phase estimation? Yes, the length of phase estimation consists of T steps. Yes, this guy also consists of T steps. Yes, okay, this one, you know, in the worst case is two to the power T, but actually it's T, yes, so the, it's also proportional. To T. Yeah, so this is something proportion. Yeah. What? No, no, no. Uh, question is what is here because I told it proportional to T, but I, we still haven't discussed how to run U. Yes, and uh, this is where a lot of complexity comes, and uh, this is from where comes the restriction of sparsity. Yes, because we need, in order to run phase estimation, we need to run control u to the power two to the power k yes and i define it what is u yes but we haven't discussed actually how to run it how to execute it yes this this is the also one of the hidden moments yes so this because up to now okay it seems that uh, the length depends complexity depends only on t yes and t in the end depends only on kappa Yes, so, so it's related to copper and precision which you want to get, yes? So the minimal value is logarithm of k plus one, but if higher precision you want to have as a, of the result, yes? Bigger t you should consider, yes? But up to now it's proportional to t. Yes, but in fact, inside phase estimation there is controlled u2 to the power k, which would also, you know, cost you something. Yes, and it would cost you actually n times s squared. Yes, sir. So let me write. Yeah. Control. What? Ah. No, you see, uh, you see the quantum computer. How fast are working quantum computer? No, but you see. So of course. So the, so the, there will be two answers. That of course any quantum state lives for short time. Yes, because after this it would be destroyed by the things around it. Uh, the second thing, whatever gate we are doing, yes, we implement some, we run some gate. There will be something, you know, physical device, yes, which is doing something, yes? So it will be something from the world of, from the classical world, not from quantum world. Yes, evolution will be in quantum thing, but there will be, I don't know, either something moving, or, I don't know, some magnetic field is changing, yes? Or some, I don't know, electric field appearing, yes? So, so there will be something from classical world which makes uh, 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 gate applied. Yes, so you cannot expect actually the uh, speed of light there. That's, that's the problem. 
Yes? And moreover, actually, if we speak about exponential uh, algorithms, <laughs> it's, even if you have exponential times speed of light, I mean, you should divide by speed. Exponential divided by speed of light, it's still a lot. I mean, because it grows too fast, <laughs> yes? So, the, but here, what, what I would like to say, yes, is that theoretically, okay, I, I need to explain why it's, it's happening of this order. Yes, I would like up to now, uh, right now, to speak uh, what are, how to say, missed parts, to speak about ideas how to solve these parts, how to resolve these parts, and I hope to show you implementation for two by two matrix. Yes, but two by two, I mean, this is, <laughs> we can do this in the classical computer as well, yes, but, but I still, I, it's better than to show nothing, yes. Yeah, there are some small quantum computers, and uh, actually, I, I was running, yes, and uh, on, so there are libraries, and you can run on those libraries, but matrix A by 8, I was not able to invert like, at, at all. But 4 by 4 matrix, I was able to invert. <laughs> yes. So that, I mean, but this is the uh, this current state of this uh, technology. Yes. So 4 by 4, 8 by 8. Yes. Even that uh, theoretical complexity is much better. Yes. So what is missed? So, MIST is how to implement rotation, but it is not important. Yes, because it's just a concrete gate. Yes, it's a concrete uh, uh, operator. Yes, so, so you just once need to think and implement it, and people did this for you. Yes, as a software developer, you never will encounter this problem. Yes, so the second thing is how to implement this guy. Yes, and this I would speak a bit about. And uh, the third thing is what is the actual complexity of this. Because you cannot say speak about complexity actually be before you answer to those two questions. And uh, this, I told, is not important, but that one is important, yes? Uh, so, uh, and I will not give a full solution to it, uh, because it's actually hard, and this is, you know, place for research to improve this, yes? And so I don't think that the, sto uh, the question how is the best way to implement this is already resolved. Yes, so this is something which one can contribute. And what is computational complexity? So, and I will write you an answer. Of what is computational complexity, the, the best known for, for this algorithm? Yes, it happens that it is something proportional to logarithm of n, of capital N. S squared, so if you have not dense matrix, not sparse matrix, uh, so S is proportional to N, then, I mean, you don't get uh, much, uh, much improvement, yes, because how I, I forgot it's not N to the power 3, the inversion, but N to the power 2 point something, uh, the best algorithm is known, yes. So, this term, um, we are sorry, but it, it is there. And another thing is kappa squared over epsilon. Where epsilon is the precision which you want to achieve. Yes? And uh, uh, so uh, if you compare it to classical algorithms, so here will be pol polynomial n, I think, n squared. Yes, but it would replace those guys. It would kappa here, so look in, depending on a conditional number, this algorithm is worse comparing to classical algorithm. And actually here it is log of one over epsilon. 
Yes, and here is one over epsilon. So uh, you never should expect from, you should expect a quantum computer fast solution, but never should expect precise solution. But by the way, this gives a chance because of course up to now already, even that your algorithm is perfect, that you know, quantum noise and so on will in any case generate problems to you. So, that's, so this is what you should expect. Very fast, very bad solution, <laughs> yes? And you will be surprised the exact words I have heard when I was working with oil industry. Yes, because they never know what is exactly under the ground. Yes, so they always have a horrible data. Yes, and so they don't like precise algorithms because uh, they have garbage in the input, yes? So they want very quickly, but quickly means not half a year, yes? Sometimes they, they, they press a button and wait half a year. Yes, so very quickly, not, uh, might be not so exact result because, okay, exact, any case is not possible because the data, the input is bad, yes? So the truth of uh, algorithms, yes, that the law, oh, garbage in, garbage out, yes? <laughs> so then it's like this. So uh, let me shortly speak about how to implement this guy. Yes. V very shortly because, uh, oh, no, it's 10 minutes, uh, not 10, 20 minutes left. So how to, I will write it as a, as a following. How to implement a guy like this where H is self-adjoint. What I know about self-adjoint, uh, and I know that it is sparse. Yes. Yeah, this is not, uh, not a lot of elements. How, how to do with this? First of all, when we know how to do this, yes, when we can calculate it uh, just on a paper. Hi, when H is diagonal. Yeah. Then we can just quickly do this, yes, but on a paper. Yes, it's also actually a question how to implement it on quantum computer. Uh, because, okay, if you have here, it's two to the power n times two to the power n matrix, so it's two to the power n number, so you, you somehow need to work to implement diagonal, but you cannot improve this, <laughs> yes? So this is the, the, the job which you have to do, and there is no other way rather than to read the values and run this. But remember that in a lot of cases, uh, when you speak about Laplace operator, Yes, you can see the discretization of Laplace operator. You know your matrix, and it consists only from, I don't know, minus two and one. Yes, so you don't have a lot of numbers there. So you can actually execute it uh, quite efficiently. Yes, okay, H diagonal, we know how to do this. Yes, so the second thing. Assume that your matrix is of the form that at each row and at each column, there is none more than one non-zero element. Then you can change coordinates, reorder them, and get a diagonal matrix. So, yes, and then let us recall, yes, that if H is S, D S minus one, then, exp then okay, I can write I here as well, yes? Then this guy is S E to the I D S minus one. So I can, presuming that I can do this operation and presuming that I can change coordinates, I can create this element, yeah, so. But this is actually a combinatorial job which you have kind of to do outside, yes, the, the quantum computer. Because, or, or inside, but actually this is why I think it is S squared there. Yes, there are universal algorithms, but then you will have S squared, in another case you could have just S. Uh, or then kind of you do this. Now the last thing. Uh, that, okay, H, 
assume that h is equal to h1 plus h2 as sum of two operators. Bad news is that e to the power i h is not equal e to the power i h1 times e to the power i h2. Yes, sorry, this is bad news for us. Yes, so we cannot just, because it's true only if h1 and h2 commutes. Yes, so on this, uh, uh, I don't know, is it from differential equation or from linear algebra? I don't know from where, yes, but please remember that. So I postulate this property. But there is something which is still true, which actually is helpful. And what is true is that e to the power a i h1 plus h2 is equal to the limit of h1 over m, let me write it like this, 1 over m, e to the power i h2, 1 over m. So if I construct such blocks and I just interchange them, then with a big enough M, I will get exactly what I want. Yes, and this is the way how you can actually do in quantum computers. Remember, because in any case, you cannot expect the exact solution. Yes, so this is just a matter how large M you can take. Yes, and I actually don't remember the proper answer to like perfect M. Yes, but still it, it exists and it's enc encoded into this asymptotic. Yes, here. And this is ingredients which are enough to construct this guy. Yes, because, okay, because of the sparsity we, have a, we can consider as a decomposition of several diagonalizable operators. Each diagonalizable operator we can run a scheme. Yes, and uh, so we can approximate the result with this. And this kind of complete, kind of, now the picture is complete, yes. Uh, but what I recommend, yes, that uh, because uh, might be you will do this not with uh, arbitrary matrix A, yes, but with your favorite matrix A which comes from somewhere. Yes, which could be, I don't know, solution of PD. This could be uh, your machine learning problem. So it has some structure a priori. Yes, then usually because of this structure, you can implement uh, this guy better than by classical, but by the standard approach. Yes, so and please don't uh, skip this opportunity. And actually, if you look onto the literature, there you will find a bunch of papers where, how to say, people are constructing their special inverse algorithm, of in, like inverse matrix algorithm for special uh, structure of matrix. Yes, so. There is, uh, there, there is a possibility to improve this, and there are actually two possibilities. One that uh, adapt Grover in order to increase probability of having here one, so that it's possible, so you can apply Grover to, to increase this probability. And uh, uh, th th there are more ways to improve the algorithm. Yes, but the, the others are in. Hamiltonian business, yes? But if you don't want to consider general story, but you want to restrict yourself to a special class of matrices, I mean, there is a big, huge field to do this. Yes, okay, let me show how actually it works. Yes, how algorithm works. Yes, so I, it's, luckily it's even not a screen saver. Yeah, so what we see here is the scheme for inversion of uh, matrix of this matrix. Yes, so two by two matrix. And remember that two by two matrix correspond 
to one could be it. <laughs> and I mean, of course, it's, uh, you should smile, okay? You can in invert two by two matrix, I mean, just, just invert. <laughs> and uh, so, but what we see here, so first of all, yes, so there is this, uh, I put this line, so here is quantum, uh, this is phase estimation one, this is rotation, yes, and you see rotation is just a simple combination of control gates, yes, and it's actually a typical story, yes, so because it, it doesn't depend on anything, yes, so you can implement it like this. And there is uh, uncompute phase estimate here, yes. And, uh, okay, uh, so there is a part of quantum Fourier, inverse of quantum Fourier transform, quantum Fourier transform. This I will not kind of show because we studied this previous lecture and I even showed this implementation. And here, if you look, uh, so it's actually a kind of special implementation of controlled U, which corresponds to uh, this exponent of IA, yes? So, but this is an implementation of it. Uh, we know that all uh, one qubit gates can be implemented, yes? So this is the demonstration of the fact that all one qubit gates can be implemented. And if you do control, you just can add control to each of them. It is not the best implementation because we know that two qubit gates can be done with three control nodes. But, okay, I was lazy <laughs> to implement this in a perfect way. Yes, so this is uh, what we see. And now how to read the result. Now how to read the result. You see this is what is in the end state. And we should look on a zero qubit, which is the, um, which is the up one here, actually. And uh, the solution could be at the third qubit, yes? So which is the down one here. And uh, uh, okay, we first look on probabilities. And okay, now we also need to add measure here, yes? And uh, add the measure. I forget what it is doing. Yes, so I, we did measure. Okay, it got uh, zero, but I want to, have, to get one. Okay, let me, so it's doing something wrong. Yes, uh, so uh, the one corresponds to this column and that column, yes? And this is, uh, how to say this, you see the probability of this is 66%, so and of this is six, so with probability 60% after measurement you will be successful. And uh, the result, yes, if it is one, then it would be two columns, yes. And those two columns uh, correspond to, uh, I'd say you should look not on probabilities now, but on state vector. And the sizes of these elements will be the relative, like, uh, relative coordinates of this uh, beta g over lambda g. So this would be xj's, relative xj's. Yeah, there. And okay, you can look on the size of those things. And, uh, oh yeah, this is how it works, yes? So if you want to get, you know, if you want to have in a classical computer exactly this vector, you have to measure the end, yes? And you need to measure number of times which is at least capital N because you need to be able to get at each coordinate at least once. Yes, so this is how it's, at that time you lose your exponential speed up. Yes, so if you want to have exponential speed up, you should stay inside quantum computer. This is the problem, yes? So which makes your algorithms are not very easy. Yes, so, but okay, this is, uh, as I told, so there is a bless, which is now uh, the fact that we can have exponential speed up. 
and there is a curse that we cannot simply go from between a classical computer and quantum computer. So, yes, uh, as usual, yes, with quantum algorithms, there is a bless and there is a curse. Yes, so. Yes, uh, the last five minutes I would like to spend with the things uh, to tell, uh, I would say, what is missed. Yes, what I omitted in the course, but the topics, big topics which exist in it. Yeah, which uh, the topics which exist in quantum computing, of course, and which I, I'm interested. Yes, of course, might be there are more questions, and Charles will tell you about quantum information a lot. Yes, but what? Quantum information. Yeah. Uh, but OK, so this is not a part of this course. It's a part of another course, yes? This, for this, first of all, of course, what is omitted is Kiskit language. So because it's very nice if, we can, if you can write and run the schemes in a certain framework where you have cycles, if, and so on. Yes, it's much better yes, than if you just uh, do with this kuasan which is on the screen now. Yes. The second thing which was omitted is error of computation. Error. So how to correctly propagate uh, uh, the quantum errors which appears in during execution of schemes on quantum computers. So how to properly calculate them and how to properly correct them. Yeah, so there are possibilities if you, in large number of, if you have several bad qubits, it's equivalent to have one Good could be it, yes? So we omitted this part, yes? Of course, there are more algorithms. And okay, I refer to quantum algorithm zoo. Yeah. One. Just Google. Yes, and you will get to a certain website where there are around 1,000 different, yeah? Yes, yes, so there are some algorithms which are already present there, but actually all of them are of this uh, size. Yes, basically. So that's, that's a problem, yes? So of course, to solve equation one minus one third one, minus one third one is, I mean, yes, but uh, there are more implementations, but I mean, this is, from my point of view, random algorithms, yes? So they, they just pick up several, yes, which might be easy to show on a few qubits, yes, and did this, but. Yeah, so uh, I showed Grover quantum Fourier transform and this HHL because I think this, they are algorithms of different types. So the idea was to show that different type of algorithms are possible. Yes, different style. Quantum Fourier transform is a, in a certain sense, classical algorithm. Grover, you already do this, need to do this warm up to have this pi over four square root of n, I mean, <laughs> why you should have it, <laughs> yes, and, uh, but still you get a result with probability almost one. Yes, and there is a here, yes, uh, the algorithm which gives you result which you want to use later, yes, but uh, uh, there is a problem that it is, uh, might be if you do not correct measurement, here it is corrupt the whole state, yes. So, so you can do sure, but this is a part of, quant uh, of uh, quantum Fourier transform. Yeah, so in the end, uh, the speed up of sure is certain, okay, way of uh, uh, that you are able to calculate a lot of things at the same time. But uh, another thing was the quantum Fourier transform as a period finding. 
so is that the thing which I showed in the uh, in the end of the previous lecture. So if you have something which is periodic and you do quantum Fourier transform, that you get some, uh, the n divided by the period. That's with high probability. Yes? How many? I don't know. It's, it's there on the quantum, quantum Yeah, yeah, it's so. I, I saw, but they have around 10. Oh. And this one has around 1,000. So this is why I how say. And uh, how say. The course is not supported by IBM, so I'm not adverting IBM. I'm adverting the resources which I found the best, yes. Which is a good for a teacher always, yes. So and I think that this resource is the best for if you want just to see the different algorithms. Yes, and let me say uh, my favorite parts of this subject. Uh, this will be number theory. Mm -hmm. And the shore is a part of this, of course. Yes, but not only shore, because, but all of these algorithms satisfy the assumption that small input, small output, complicated calculations inside. So there is a chance that it would at some point works. So another thing is PDE simulation. Yes, and it is actually related to, to two things. First of all, uh, if you go to modern algorithms of simulation of partial differential equations, then it was always referred in the end to inversion of matrices. So we already knew knew how to do, this, know how to do this. But moreover, quite often it happens that you can reduce it to such just uh, calculations, yes? So, yeah, but the way how you reduce this, it's a questionable. It's a, a research area, yes? And the last thing is, I would say molecular dy dynamics. Molecular, how I call it? Dynamics, oh, okay, dynamics, yeah. So this means that if you want to study properties of uh, molecules, yes, something which is consists of atoms, uh, yes, then you cannot neglect quantum effects. But if you start to, to do quantum, uh, try to incorporate quantum effects, you have a very huge computational complexity. So that's, I mean, this is like even, uh, as I remember, for two atom, two, two molecular, uh, two, two atoms molecules, yes, molecules which consist of two atoms. It's very hard to calculate uh, in terms of quantum mechanics. But of course, nobody cares about two <laughs> molecules consisting of two atoms, yes? We, we'd like to look, uh, uh, proteins, yes, which consist of a lot of stuff, yes. We want to design antibodies, yes, for our uh, organisms, yes. And for this, you have to take into account quantum effects, yes, quantum mechanical effects. And then it appears, so, and of course, because how to say quantum computer is based on a Schrodinger equation, yes, it might be easier to simulate something which is based on Schrodinger equation. And it is like this. So there is a huge uh, list of research which is uh, devoted to this. Yes, and the last thing which we didn't tell is adiabatic. Quantum computer. So which I mentioned on the first lecture, but uh, I don't know the theory much more than I mentioned in the, in the first lecture, so I don't include it here, but of course this is the topic which should be considered as well. Yes, and this is of the same type of uh, question, so because this is two competitive models, yes, one is this gate-based, another is adiabatic. Yes, it is proved that in a certain sense they're equivalent, but there are details which show that they're equivalent, but not really equivalent. Yes, so the, 
there, there is a thing to be understood there, yes, as well. Yes, and so I would like to stop here. And the last thing before the video stopped, yes, so I would like to recall my contact, yes, so my email, mm -hmm, yes, and uh, Yes, and so uh, for what I recall it, <laughs> yes, that, uh, okay, I mentioned some topics which could be included into the course but was not included. Uh, so we can have a reading seminar where not I'm the speaker but all of us are speakers uh, in a rotating matter, yes. Uh, but only if uh, there are enough interested people Yes, so please, if you are interested, then you can write to me. So if you're not physically able to come to IMPA, we will think how to organize the mixed format so when some of the people are inside the room and somebody is from the Zoom, yes, and we will try to organize such things. But if it would be enough people who are interested, then I will not do this. So uh, the, the, it's a good idea to have on the, say, next semester, yes, to have a course. Half of it would be devoted to quantum computing, and half of it will be devoted to quantum information. I think that's really possible, yes. <laughs> yeah, if it is enough people, because, okay, seminar for two of us, I mean, we can... <laughs> Ah, okay, I see, I see. But, okay, let us, so I mentioned this, yeah. you know, people are welcome to write, yes, and people are welcome not to write, <laughs> yes, so both uh, behavior are welcome, <laughs> yes. So thank you very much for your attention. This is the end of the course. Thank you. And hope you enjoyed uh, it and hope you will enjoy quantum computers uh, in your life. Thanks.